All right, good morning everybody. Let us just open up in prayer as we start this Good Friday service. Heavenly Father, we come into your house this morning, Lord. And Lord, as we come, we just remember this week that has been. We remember the sacrifice that you paid. And as we come this morning, Lord, we come to reflect over this holy week. We also know that Sunday is coming. And so, Lord, this morning, as we gather We gather to do it in remembrance of that wonderful price that you paid for each and every single one of us. That price that sometimes we do take for granted. Lord, this morning we lift up all the churches around South Africa. We think of all the services that are happening today. Lord, all the services that will be happening over this weekend. And Lord, we lift them up to you and just pray your anointing and your move of the Spirit in those services. As Christians gather, and maybe Christians there that don't regularly go to church, Lord, we pray that this will be a time that you'll really speak to them. Lord, we lift up all of our churches, the Wesleyan churches in our trans Tell district, Lord, as well as those in our region. And we just pray, Lord, that there'll be a great revival, a move, in the Spirit, in each of those churches. Lord, and as we know, it's been a year since, Lord, we went into lockdown and we weren't able to meet over this Easter period. So, Lord, we pray that this is a time where we will reflect and and just be grateful and and recognize that we need to meet and fellowship together. We think of all of our churches, the Bridell Family Fellowship, Kempton Park Community Church, New Beginnings. We think of Imapopeni and even Kingsway, Lord. And we lift them all up to you this morning. We just pray that you will continue to bring them favor. But Lord, also we think of the congregations that attend those. We pray for your blessing upon each and every single member and their families there. Lord, we also just pray that we continue to grow those churches. Lord, at this time, we also lift up our compassionate ministry, El Piso. And Lord, we just thank you for all the wonderful outpouring there. But Lord, we pray that we continue to lift up lives and impact lives through the compassionate ministry. Lord, we also lift up our country and all the issues and worries and concerns that we have with regards to our country. We just pray for all of our leaders, our political leaders, Lord, all the leaders in any industries. And Lord, we just pray that, Lord, before they make decisions that impact others, Lord, that they seek your face. We also lift up, Lord, those that are sick, those that are battling with their health. And Lord, this morning we just pray once again for your healing touch, Lord. We pray that you will comfort those that are struggling maybe with the loss of loved ones. And Lord, we pray that you will bring them strength in this very difficult time. Lord, we also just now spend some time in in our own quiet reflection. Maybe there's things weighing on our hearts that we want to present to you this morning. And Lord, as we come and lay them at the cross, Lord, you know each and every single one of us. You know things that worry us, things that concern us. And so, Lord, this morning I just pray as we just spend a minute or so in our own quiet reflection, as we come and lay it at the cross, Lord, that you will hear each and every single one of us.
And so now, Lord, as we begin this service, Lord, we just pray that there's a special anointing over the worship, over the Word. And Lord, we pray that all, everybody that is attended or that is watching this morning, Lord, their lives will be impacted, their lives will be changed. And they will not be the same as they, they came here or watched this morning. And we pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Right, good morning, welcome. Just take a look around. Isn't it so wonderful to see for a change the church full? And you know what? Let's just pray that as we continue this year that we are able to fill the pews. Um, let's hope that lockdown moves away to the point where we can actually go back to a full church. But it's so wonderful to see everybody here. A couple of uh, new faces, maybe some faces that we haven't seen in a while. But even those that are watching, welcome. And you know, there's a reason it's called Good Friday. Because we know what is coming on Sunday. And so I welcome you all. And I pray that the, today the service will touch you. I pray that there will be an anointing over the Word. And I just know that today is a special day. Because as we've gone through Holy Week and we've worked towards this final destination, I think we know the, the price and the impact. And we also know who it was for. And so I just pray that it's, been, it's going to be a wonderful service. I'll just ask Pastor Anka just to come up and light the candle for us. Good morning, everyone. We light this candle as a symbol of Jesus Christ's light that he brought into this world. And today we recognize Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and his ultimate sacrifice for us on, the Calvary, on Calvary. And this is what we are celebrating over this week. Let us stand as we open up with praise and worship. Rain down, let's 
and sisters, as we come together this morning in remembrance and respect of our Lord Jesus Christ, ultimate sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, welcome. Just uh, the announcements short and sweet this morning, just only thing just to remind you that Sunday service is not 8.30 but 9 o'clock, as originally posted in that, uh, just through the numbers and that we've got one service on Sunday. I'd just like to pray over the basket. Um, just for those of you that don't know, the basket, these are all the people's names that have been placed in over here that we think need salvation in their life, that need the Lord in their lives. And I stand before you this morning, you know, with testimony that a couple of years back, my name was in here. And through all my prayer warriors, the church, my family, our Lord Jesus Christ, I stand here before you today as a child of God. Please, I ask you to raise your hands and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today with the respect, dear Lord, of your ultimate sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for our sins, dear Lord, I thank you for everything that you've done for us in that, dear Lord. Dear Lord, and as we take note of all these names of the people in this basket, dear Lord, and all the people that have placed these names in the basket, dear Lord, I ask you, dear Lord, for your help and your guidance in taking these people and knowing that our God is the light, our God is love our god is life dear lord i ask you as we stand before you give us the actions the words in our mouths and that dear lord to help with your presence dear lord and guide these people out of the dark places and know that you are the light of the life dear lord i ask you to help us and turn their lives around 180 degrees dear lord and those doors that are closed that are shut dear lord that we may open them dear lord and help them seek your face in salvation dear lord and i thank you once again dear lord for everything that you are to us our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please, I ask you to stand in that as we worship the Lord. You know that he really enjoys it when we lift up and raise our voices to know that he enjoys having us in his life. Thank you.
Dressed in righteous deeds to hide All the stains below We have judged your sons and daughters For the sin that is our own May we now forgive each other Forgive us for our love Of the things we wish to own We forsake the feast above For all the crumbs below Though you made us sons and daughters We do not the world disown May we find a great
find it through years unnumbered on heaven's shore my song shall praise him forevermore blessed Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning to Good Friday service. Isn't it great to be in God's house? I'll never, ever in my life, every Easter will be special to me after lockdown of 2020. And just knowing that we can, we all have chosen to be here today. All glory be to God for that. And so, this is indeed... A good, good Friday for us. As we celebrate Friday, we remember last Sunday I spoke about Palm Sunday. Can you remember that? I spoke about um, our people laid out this tapestry. This very jacket was lying somewhere. A few of you stood on it. Don't know why. <laughs> or maybe because it was on the floor, Jono. <laughs> but, uh, and we had palm leaves out there. Can you remember? And we spoke about, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And, uh, and then we spoke about how they ultimately, eventually, ended up turning against Jesus. From blessed, it went to crucify Him. And on Monday evening, Pastor Trevor spoke about, uh, about Jesus as being the Son of Man, as we've gone into Holy Week. It's been a wonderful week for us. He spoke about Jesus being the Son of Man, and how Jesus is the promised Messiah, and that He's coming to die for our sins. And so that was Sunday, Palm Sunday, and that was Monday. And then we went into Tuesday, and Pastor Trevor spoke about Jesus as the Son of God. And our Jesus is the Christ. And that, and that the disciples recognized Jesus as the Son of God, and that Jesus had all authority. Wednesday of Holy Week, uh, we got another pastor, because we'd had enough of Pastor Trevor. And then, and then, and then we... Then, we had Pastor Anka, who spoke about, about the suffering in the world. And, and that it tells us there's something wrong in this world. And that she came to the wonderful conclusion that, that the suffering in the world really comes down to one word. Sin. And that Jesus came as the son of suffering. And that he suffered so that we can have eternal salvation. Thursday evening... Pastor Patrick, that's right, I said Pastor Patrick. Hallelujah, we're going to be celebrating that shortly. Spoke about how Jesus is the son of sacrifice. I know we've done it a little bit different. We didn't follow the normal tenebrae rules. But sometimes we can get so fixed in our structure and liturgy, and we felt as a, as a, as a pastoral team that it would be good just to focus on, on Jesus being the son of sacrifice. And, and the thing, the walk away that I got from, from, from Brother Patrick was that, was that this wonderful truth that Jesus, Jesus' sacrifice was done in this, in love. And so today we come to, that's so far been Holy Week, and then we come to today, this Good Friday. Don't you want to turn to the book of Mark, please? Have you got your Bibles with you? I trust you have, church. If you've got your Bible with you, don't you want to raise it up for me? Got your Word of God? Yo, there's not so many swords. Don't forget your sword now. So like going into battle without your rifle. Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 14. Bless you, love. I'll, I'll, I'll read from verse 32. 
Uh, verse uh, is 36, really, but I'll read from verse 32. I'm reading from the New King James Version. All right. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. Verse 35, He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, verse 36, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Father, we pray that you will bless the word. Father, we pray that you'll open up our hearts and our minds to your revelation. For your glory, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And so church, last night we remembered the darkness that descended over Jerusalem. Uh, the, the residents had finished their Passover meals and, and the lamb and the unleavened bread had been consumed and the sandals and the staffs and the belts had been put away. What do you mean by that, Pastor John? Well, don't you want to turn to Exodus 12? We're going to read Exodus 12 verses 1 through to 11. And that's where the Passover is instituted. Just to give a little bit of a breakdown that you can understand what is this Passover. Of course, the Passover is now Easter. This is Passover for us. And the title of Exodus 12, 1 2 through to 11 here for me is the Passover instituted. Exodus chapter 12 verse 1. I'm going to read 1 through to 11. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel saying, On the tenth of this month, Every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep, or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And verse 7, And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts on the lintel of the house, houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw. Nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, on this very, very night in Caiaphas' house, a conference was underway. A conference was underway with some of the members of the Sanhedrin and some officers of the temple guard and one of Jesus' closest friends. In a secluded hillside, Olive Garden of Gethsemane, just outside the city, eastern wall opposite the temple, Jesus sat with his other 11 closest friends. His 11 friends couldn't stay awake. Jesus couldn't sleep. 
earlier, just earlier that evening, Jesus had shared with his disciples the most marvelous, marvelous Passover meal of all time. Though his, his disciples only realized that later, in retrospect. Jesus, it says, in the Word of God, had fervently desired to eat it with them. Luke 22, 15. I've got so many scriptures, you're gonna, you can write them down. If you're going to follow me, we're going to be long. So just stick with me, all right? You can write Luke 22, 15. Then he said to them, this is Jesus saying, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Luke 22, 15. For the great Passover, the one for which the Passover in Egypt was a type and a shadow, was about to take place. This Passover that we, that we just read about in Exodus is actually just a type of pointing to Jesus. And here he is. The Passover is about to happen. The angel of death was coming to claim the firstborn son. Did you get the firstborn lamb? The firstborn son. Did you get without blemish? He that was without blemish. Colossians 1 verse 15 says this, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, talking about Jesus. Praise God. Colossians 3.11 goes further, Where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And he was also this, this Passover lamb. And he was about to be slain to take away the sins of the world. That's you and, you and my sins. And I just, I, we were sitting in the office and we were just worshipping to this last song. That, that's why it's not quite the same as the others because we just felt this has got to go into the service. But I don't know about you. It does the significance of Easter just, do you get it? Are you so overjoyed about what Christ has done for you? That your sins, that, that not one of us can say, I deserve to have this wonderful privilege, that, that the God of the universe would decide to make this plan. And that it really doesn't matter what I've done. All I need to do is just go yes to Jesus and I'm okay. That's it. You don't have to get all this list done and, and I'll first get myself holy before. No, no, no. He knows you can't do that. And so he's got this plan that he's, that he's way before, he even instituted it before, before. Now that's practical in English, but you know what I mean. Right? And because we read the Passover and, and this Passover is just this, this top. It's a top of Jesus. And there's so many types in the Bible of pointing to Jesus. That's actually called the whole su subject, typology. So you look and you see, where's the stop of Jesus? And you look, oh, there's Jesus. Oh, that fits. No coincidence with God. In John 1, 29, we read, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Revelations 5, 6, we read, And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as though it had been slain. So this eternally obedient firstborn son, the spotless lamb of God, would take on himself all the sin of the sons and daughters of disobedience. That's you and I. And Ephesians 5, 6 says, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. But, however, His blood would cover them. Yo, church, I just thank God for that. And I can stand here before you today. And I can know that my, my sins are covered by the blood of Jesus. And as Pastor, Pastor God, hey, that, I don't know about that. Maybe that's a, but as Brother Colin said, what a wonderful testimony. Oh, I can stand before you now. I'm saved by God's grace in my life. 
My heart just jumped. The spirit in me just jumped with him. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah again. To know that we have this, regardless of whatever, whatever gunk can be in our world or our society. or our, and, and on Easter Sunday, I've got a word prepared for that very fact. To know that regardless of what you're focusing on, man, Easter Sunday is coming, as, as Pastor Trevor alluded to. So today we remember the cross. We remember the blood. While it is a gory time and it is a hectic time, it's a challenging time for a Christian, I want to tell you, if Jesus had said no, we would be in big trouble. Two Corinthians five twenty one says this: For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in who in him. And so we would be forever shielded from the death angel's blow. So death, as the apostle Paul can, can proclaim, death no longer holds its sting. And we've said this last year. 2020 and 2021 has been hectic for us as a pastoral team. Boy, have we done a lot of funerals. It's been really challenging. And, and, and yet, in, there's a distinct difference, church. There's a distinct difference at the funeral or memorial service of a believer and a non-believer. There's a distinct difference. There's mourning everywhere. But at a believer's funeral, there's hope. So this firstborn of many brothers, Jesus is the firstborn, the great Passover lamb, had taken bread and wine, and he said to the first 11 of his brothers, he said this in Mark 14, 22 and 25. You can turn there, I'm sure you can get there. Mark 14, 22 and 25. And he said this, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, and he said this, take it, this is my body. Now, keep in context, church. This is before he's going to the cross. He's busy, he's busy setting this context to say, yeah, we sit today, and we are going to, shortly at the end of the service, we are going to take and we are going to eat of the body of Christ. Wow. The greatest Passover meal of ever, sitting around that table with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say that? Yes, the next greatest Passover meal. Is Jesus in our midst? Yes. <laughs> and that's the wonderful thing. We have Jesus here. We have Jesus in us. The Holy Spirit resides in us. And we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is my body. This is my blood. And when Jesus done that, in so doing that, the old Passover was incorporated into the new Passover. Just like that. Oof. Done. From that time, that moment on, the new Passover would be celebrated in remembrance of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 26 says this, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after the supper, saying this, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Wow. So what, this, this communion, this, this time of communion, is us proclaiming, I'm going to remember, Jesus is going to return. There's a time of great joy. 
You see, we don't have to worry about putting on our sandals and putting on our belts and getting ready to run into, uh, out of the promised land, right? We know, where's our promised land? It's heaven. <laughs> it's waiting for us. And we know Jesus has told us he's prepared a place for us. So what is so good about this Good Friday? The world looks at it and says, what is so good about Good Friday? For us, that's what makes Good Friday so great. We look and we go, hallelujah, the cross, the cross is what church? Do you notice when you look back, just do me all a favor, look back to that big cross that you walk over every, is Jesus hanging on that cross? <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> he's off the cross. He's off the cross. He's off the cross. The price has been paid. Colossians 1.13 says this, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. You know, church, I, I, I struggled first when I heard about this Father God and, and this Father, and how can I, you all have heard the story, I'm sure about me and, and my Father, and that's, that's fine, but, but this, is, this is a little bit different. This is deeper, man. This is about this Father God that has just got this plan that He's prepared in advance, and He's got your back, and you, all you need to do is just go, Jesus, I, Jesus, I believe in you. And of course, you're all closer as Christ comes into your life. I got that bit. But once Christ is in your life, church, there's, there's something extraordinarily different about how you, how you filter and look at life, right? But now, this night, Jesus, in this desolation, is praying in this garden and and he's prayed in, in many desolate places before the Word of God says you can look in five, uh, Luke 5, 16. Jesus has prayed in a lot of desolate places, but, but ne never like this before. He's in utter desolation. He's feeling completely alone because Jesus knows where he's going, church. And in this familiar garden, Jesus looks deeply into the Father's cup he was about to drink. And Jesus was terrified. Everything in his human flesh wanted to flee this impending doom that he knew was waiting for him. And I believe his, his spirit groaned with the dread of one thing that was far greater than the torture on the cross. The dread of being forsaken by his father. He proclaims in Mark 14, 36, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Nine words, nine unfathomable words. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. I looked at that and I I recognize God, because that's who Jesus is, God. God longing and pleading to be delivered from God's will. Expressed in nine simple words. And yet this, I find this humble faith and submission to God's will, God the Father's will, that was more beautiful than all the glory in creation. Do you see that with me, church? <laughs> and, and Pastor Trevor spoke about Philippians 2 and about that, that, that Jesus, even though it reads as follows, it's Philippians 2, 5 and 8, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. 
So Jesus, number one, came down in the likeness of man. He became like us. He's God. He becomes a human. Really? Do you think that's a cool thing? That's like a Ferrari becoming a Ford. Am I safe there? <laughs> no, Land Rover. I really like Fords. I like them. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I've got trouble. I can see it, right? And then goes further and says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, verse 8, and became obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. So number one, it's not just death, it's death on a cross. You see, God wanted God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even though in that dark, dark moment, church, God wished in his body and his soul that God's will could be done another way. And at that moment, another mystery came into view. God the Son, perfectly obedient to God the Father for all eternity. Hebrews 5, 8 says this, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Church, I want to tell you this morning, no one understands better than God how difficult it can be for a human to embrace the will of God. And no human has suffered more embracing the will of God and the will of God the Father than the Son of God. You see, for when Jesus calls us to follow him, Whatever the cost, he's not calling us to do something he is either unwilling to do or has never done himself. Remember, church, no human has suffered more in embracing the will of God the Father than God the Son. No human. So when you get into that heaviness and you're feeling so, oh, I can't, I'm suffering so much, just remember. Jesus suffered more. And that's why we can look at Jesus and we can look at him and we can see Jesus in Hebrew 12 verse 2 as the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is our great high priest. He understands far better than we do. What it's like to willingly and to faithfully endure and sometimes excruciating, momentarily, painful will of God for the sake of eternal joy. He understands completely. And so this Good Friday, we join God the Son in praying to God the Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if we find that in body and soul, and we wish God's will for us could be done in a very different way from what God's will appears to be, then maybe we can proclaim with God as well as Jesus did, Father, all things are possible for you. If possible, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And that is why we can proclaim today is an awesome, great, good Friday. We remember our Lord and Savior. We're going to go into a special before we go into communion now. I'd like you just to bow your heads. This actually is a South African youngster that I know from my Emmaus days that I worked with Chrysalis. He's now in America. And I actually got this permission from him this morning. He posted it for, for Easter. So he's just going to sing. There's no words. Just let this sing, sink in. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem. 
that day. The soul tried to clear the narrow street, but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beating. There were stripes upon his back, and he wore a crown of thorns. On his head, and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for him. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering, like a lamb came the Messiah, cries the King. But he chose to walk that road. Out of His love for you and me, down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. Bleeding from a beating, there were stripes upon His back. And he wore a crown of thorns upon his head, and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering, like a lamb, came the Messiah, Christ the King. But he chose to walk that road of his love for you and me down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. The blood of that would clear the souls of all men made its way to the heart. Of Jerusalem, down the Via Dolorosa, called the Way of Suffering, like a lamb came the Messiah, Christ the King. But He chose to walk that road out of His love. Church, we all have uh, lovely boxes. You'll see there's new little communion elements therein. Nice red ones. If you haven't got a red one, I'm sorry. And there's nice wafers in there. They have all been handled and uh, flogged. Huh. All right, if we can take out your, your elements, open up your cups, and then if you finish, if you can be upstanding, if you can, please. Let's uh, remember, let's remember Jesus. Has everybody got, anyone that perhaps hasn't got communion? Great. On the night that the Lord is betrayed, as we've just heard, he took the bread, and after breaking it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat my body for you. The body of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning that you gave your son Jesus to die for us, that his body was broken for us. And Lord, we remember that this morning as we partake in this. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Likewise, after blessing the cup, he gave it to them saying, take, drink, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. 
the blood of the new covenant for you. Lord, likewise, we thank you for the blood that was shed, the new covenant. And Lord, that our sins are now forgiven. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. As we close, this is uh, one more service left for our whole Holy Week. We pray that everyone you come into contact with, you can share about Jesus and about what He's done in your life. For Easter is really where it's at for us as Christ followers, right? Remember, as we, I'm going to pray now for the offering, the stars and offering, um, all these lights and that cost money. Pray for some of the people that stay on our, on, on our plots here. I know that Harry and them have been without water for yo, few, quite a while. Um, and so just pray, pray for those that perhaps sometimes we can take things for granted, isn't it? Pray for those that take Jesus for granted. Remember, we were there one day. Let's just pray for the offering, and then we'll close with a benediction. Father, we thank you that we have this privilege that we can give back to you. And Father, we do realize as we stand before you today that, that Father, really nothing that we give truly, really we can lay claim to and say it's in our brilliance. Everything we have, everything we are, comes from you, Lord. And so, Father, we thank you that we have this privilege to give back to you. As you've told us, Lord, you tell us that uh, we need to give with a cheerful heart. And so we pray that we'd be that. That we give with a cheerful heart. Not to be blessed, but to just say thank you. And bless you, Lord. And now, by the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with each and every single one of us as we leave here this morning, Father God. May we remember Jesus and the empty cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God keep you. God turn his face towards you. God grant you his glorious peace. Be blessed out of your socks. Have a great Easter. Jesus, there's no